Now, unless you're one of our patrons, you won't have heard an episode of Years and Years before. Years and Years is the extra podcast from National Treasures. That's me, Laura Lex. And me, Will Duggan. Where every episode we take a different year from history and learn as much as we can about it, despite our personalities. Uh, So we just thought we'd give you a little taster of what you can get if you're a mega fan and you drop us a bit of dosh on Patreon. Enjoy the episode. Thanks so much. Uh, Enjoy our extra content. We love content. Uh, (laughs) Content, content, content. Um, This week's episode, Will Duggan is the man in charge of the year. Will, what year did you get? This year, no, this episode, this year, (laughs) the year in question, thank you, uh, is 1989. And I will say before we start, I haven't enjoyed researching this one, Laura. Oh no, why? Because it's long enough ago for there to be some really important historical things happen. It's definitely history. We're over 30 years ago. Um, But it's close enough that I was born and it's made me feel like I've achieved nothing. Oh, Uh, It's a really interesting year because the people that died are very much a part of history. But the people that were born are present and younger than me by three years and have achieved so much. (laughs) So much. (laughs) But you've achieved loads too. Look at you here on your podcast talking about it. Uh, I have seven people who were born in that year and I had to really cut it down who have achieved so much more. Have we got Oscar nominees? Big time. Have we got future presidents of the USA? Big time. Have we what? got... Sp- Born in 1989? Yeah, very much. You'll see. You'll see as the interview progresses. I'm so excited. Uh, how are you before we start going? How are you in and of yourself? I'm all right. It's, it is what it is, isn't it? I'm actually going out of the house to do a gig tonight. Amazing. Which gig yeah. are you doing? Um, I'm doing a fundraiser for the Comedia. Um, yeah, Lovely. it'll have happened by the time people are listening to this, so this is useless. <laughs> but I'm going down to a studio, and there's no audience there. They're all on screens, but they will sort of be live in their living rooms while I'm in a studio. So I'm going to put on downstairs clothes. Wow. And, yeah. I've, I've actually bought a new dress today. for it. What colour is it? I'll show you, actually. It's, this is no good for a podcast at all. But what do you think of this? I mean, I know it's leopard print, so, but that's nice, isn't it? I think it is very beautiful. Uh, Thank you. It is like a grey leopard print, sort of a uh, 1950s Ealing studio leopard, one not in Uh, (laughs) colour. I think you'll look wonderful, Laura. I'm wearing wearing, uh, a polo shirt today. You look fancy today. You're you're gearing up to go back to a pub, aren't you? Monday. I've taken a day (laughs) off work. I've literally (laughs) taken a day off work on Monday. Been knocking outside my favourite pub in Finsbury Park at midday. Let me in. It is time. <laughs> That's a very well dug thing to be up to. Yeah, I'm not happy with it, but I, I know who I am and I have to accept that. It's 1989. What day of the week did it start on? Do you know? Um, well, good question. Thank you for asking. I haven't found that out this time because there's too much actual stuff going on. Ah, is that just our fact for when it's a bit of a shoddy year? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. If it's 876 BC, you can be like, hey, what what day of the week was it? In this week, nothing. Hey, I like 876. Half Dan Ragnathor. Can I tell you, actually, not day of the week, but I can tell you. So we use the Gregorian calendar, right? Sure, I'll believe that's that. The, as in, as in, it is twenty twenty one right now, and that's in the Gregorian calendar. I thought it was Julian. No, Julian is before uh, Gregorian, I think. But in, it's basically it's Gregorian minus thirteen days. That's the Julian calendar, right? Which, as an excuse for HMRC, never works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got I've got another thirteen days. I think you'll find actually your man. Um, but do you know how many calendars there are that like work? So there's the Gregorian calendar, this one, nineteen eighty nine. But in the Baha'i calendar, which is like an offshoot of Islam, it's only year one four five. Fun. Uh, so in, in in the Vikram Samvat, the Hindu calendar, it's twenty forty five. We're living in the future in that particular calendar. Japanese calendar, it's Shawa 64. Um, do you want to hear what year it is in Unix time, which I think is like space time? Isn't that where you've had your knob chopped off? 
That's you nook time. Oh, <laughs> that uh, would be longer, I think, that time, because the pain of having no baubles would make you um, very sad. So all time would feel like three days. Well, if you think time is three days, check this out. The unix time is the year. It's a way to describe an exact point in time. So it's like uh, how many seconds have elapsed since the Unix epoch, which I cannot find a meaning for, but what a name. <laughs> uh, minus, of course. Uh, oh, no. Uh, the Unix epoch was the 1st of January 1970. And why not? Um, why? Did they just pick a time and be like, bam, that is space? I think it was the 70s. Everyone was on at least four drugs at any one point. <laughs> um, My fourth drug it- is wearing off. What shall I take to replace <laughs> it? <laughs> have a martini it's unix time <laughs> hey it's unix time somewhere the 70s um, they were space crazy weren't they like they all star wars was it. the 70s wasn't it um it was yeah also unix time just in case i know you'll be thinking this it ignores leap seconds oh me too <laughs> you know if you were born on a leap second you only get a birthday every four seconds anyway this year in unix time is five nine nine six one six oh 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 dash six three one one five one nine 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 Captain's log. Yeah, I don't know. It's all calendars. Anyway, anyway so it's... the year was so interesting that you don't know what day it started, but not so interesting that we haven't just found out about no balls time. Uh, yes, but also whilst I have uh, bought myself some time there during the record, <laughs> it started on a Sunday. Hey, it's a Sunday kind of a year. All right, it's a Sunday. That year. gives me lazy vibes. I feel like it's going to be a chilled out year. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's not. not. It starts and it does not stop. So I was Granted. like two and a quarter when this year started. This is the first year we've done where I've been alive. Yeah, I was just over two. Um, I was born in the November of 86. You were born in the September of 86? I was, yeah. Yeah, Same school year, same school channel. Uh, point different is, schools, loads though. Of, loads, yeah, different schools. Uh, loads of stuff happened. So the big one, the thing that everyone knows. Well, would you want to do events, births or deaths first? Um, I want to start with a bit of local. Tell me what's going on in the UK. Is it Thatcher? Is she in charge? It's Thatcher in the UK. Uh, it is the poll tax is introduced in, I think, Scotland, uh, right. which is the first, but uh, the precursor to council tax. Now but tell coming... me, William, I should know what a poll tax is. I think it's a bad thing that got people angry. Is that like you have to pay tax to vote? I think it's a tax. It's basically, it's we call it council tax now, right. but it's changed. It was a tax per person that lived in your house. So per poll, per person. Um, and it was very unfair if you're left-leaning, as I am. Uh, as you are. And I'm, I'm, I'm not making assumptions No, about I'm right-wing for BBC Balance. Otherwise, we're not allowed this podcast. Great. I like Stalin. You like... Killing people for Lovely. other reasons. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was seen as wildly unfair to people that earned less money. I remember as a kid, as you drove from Kettering to Corby, big sign on the bridge that said, no poll tax here. That's how touchable and tangible this history is, Laura. I saw yeah. graffiti about it. Uh, yeah, so that was happening it was coming to the end of thatcher obviously the uh, the falklands is finished the minor strike is finished i think it was next year 1990 when she was sort of ousted by john major oh i just watched that episode of the crown <laughs> great you probably know more about it than i do then mm, yeah but to be honest with you other than that the end of the 80s the uk is not the place to be for world events in 1989 Right. That's that's good. That I always like it when we're a bit quiet because if we're noisy, something bad's happening. Yeah, somebody's getting colonized. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's not many years where you're like, let's head to Britain for some good news. Um 1997. What happened good in Britain in 1997? Blair landslide, which at the time was Oh, but well, you see I'm very right wing, so I'm not interested in that. Okay. That is t- Terrible news uh, the Kos- for the old Kosovo War. Laura. Brilliant. There That's more go. my thing. Toppling communist dictators? No, no, no. No. No, no, that's more of the Americans. But I do have some interesting topplings that happened in 1989. All right. Berlin Wall came down. Oh! Berlin Wall came down in 1989. Um, so it's the end of the... Well, the Soviet Union ended in 1991. 
because, do you know, it was all a mistake. Uh, one of the West German ambassadors was on the wall talking about when free trade would happen between the two. And he was meant to say, we're going to start trialling it in a couple of weeks, give it a little while, and then, you know, we'll see where we go. But he mm. hadn't got the memo. So when the interviewer said, <laughs> and when's it go from? He's like, now? Now. John, now. Everyone go now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they tried to stop it, but going, well, I don't think so. So that's it. Um, David Hasselhoff, huh. of course, sang. Isn't it mad that Hasselhoff is like a legit figure of... Um, liberty <laughs> in the former yeah. Soviet Union. Whereas I hey, think, hey, he's a he's a cool cool dude guy. He's kind of a cool dude guy, apart from that when he's eating a burger on the floor, battered. But you know, we've all got our demons. I do not know what that refers it's to, f- but it sounds exciting. It's not exciting. It's really horrible. You... <laughs> <laughs> but think about how much of his life he went without having carbs or burgers. Well, I wouldn't say he went without carbs because there's so many carbs in booze and boy drinks. Hasselhoff oh. drinks. Does he drink? <laughs> yeah, he drinks. Do we have to say allegedly? Is that a thing we have no, to do? No, I no. think it is a matter of record that Hasselhoff fucking loves a Bev. Um, <laughs> do you know I've been to the Berlin Wall? Is it nice? Yeah, it's all right, actually. I went to Berlin last year and um, my favourite building was the the old Nazi headquarters, Natch, being the right-wing monstrous that I am. Um, but it actually is pretty. If you if you like architecture, like gothic <laughs> sort of architecture, it's it's really cool. But I went to the Berlin Wall too, and um, it's they, they've done loads of murals on it. Oh, yeah. So, like, it, all the different segments of it are all painted in different ways. And some of them are shit, but some of them very pretty. A lot of art is shit, to be fair. Yes, loads of art shit. Loads of it. Most of it, I'd say. It, yeah. Um. It, I only like the stuff with titties. Oh, I love it. Oh, my God. Have you seen a tit? They're fucking incredible. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that. Uh, now, I'm not going to go into this too much, but I am going to commit a cardinal sin of podcasting and recommend another podcast. Um, Do it, mate. We've got enough listeners that we're not worried. We, hey, listen. If one of our listeners goes, all we lose is 2%. Uh, so... Why would they go? Why can't they listen to both? That's Do you not... have a strict one in, one out? Are you like a 70s drug person? I'm like a 70s drug person or a nightclub in the early 2000s. It's one in, one out, <laughs> fella. Um, Who is it that's got the material that's like, it's not one in, one out, it's one out, one in? It's Andy Watson. Is it? That's a good bit. Blackpool's One in, one out it. would have to go in, find the person that's now got <laughs> Sorry, a lead. Sorry, mate, my turn. Yeah. <laughs> one out, one in. Big up Andy Watson and whatever podcast you're about to mention. It's a BBC Sounds one about the song Winds of Change by the Scorpions. Do you know? Uh... I do not. Winds of Change just makes me think of Randall in Monsters, Inc. going, you hear that? It's the winds of change. Well, that's pretty much what the song's about, but less animated and more toppling the Soviet Union. Go oh. on, go keep up, down to Um, You might know the Scorpions. Cause She's a man-eater. That's Nelly Furtado. Um, oh. <laughs> well, how's that the first song your brain thinks of? That sounded like the same tune to me. Um, I'm not very good at tunes. Scorpions, here I am, rock you like a hurricane. Dun, 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 dun. Big 80s. There she goes. That's the Lars. That's the Lars. There she goes again. That's about heroin. This is going to be driving song. my brother nuts. It's about heroin. What? Is it? Yeah, the Lars. There she goes. Uh, about heroin. But people on heroin don't really go places, do they? So many. Like, quite still. No, it's about the heroin. There she goes, <gasps> coursing through my veins. The she in oh! question is the heroin. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, the last? No wonder you only had one song. Too busy getting smacked off your fucking tits, lads. If um, that song had been about cocaine, then they'd have had 50 billion songs. I, I like the uh, the Eric Clapton song, Cocaine, because the chorus is just the words, cocaine. But yeah, yeah. Jot, fair enough, you've really found a theme. Point is... <laughs> the 70s, mate, what a time. This is the 80s! <laughs> The Scorpions were a big uh, Euro metal, heavy metal, kind of hair metal, Bon Jovi, Scorpions, Twisted Sister, all that kind of thing. And then they release Winds of Change in the Soviet Union. And it's a ballad about how something better is coming. And there is a huge conspiracy theory that that song was actually written by the CIA. (laughs) 
as a way to destabilise the Soviet Union. As a podcast, I think it's called Winds of Change on BBC Sounds. Podcasts, news, music. Um, give us a series, BBC Sounds, you shits. Um, but it's about <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine being in the songwriting wing of the CIA. Like, this is Dave. He's the busting down doors guy. This is Michael. He's the stabbing people in the neck guy. And this is Lillian. She's very good at a rhyming couplet. <laughs> What's your partner doing? Oh, he's just destabilising a democratically elected person in South America. And John, he's got a ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> Tear down that wall, do, 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 tear down that... No, it's never going to work. It needs to be softer, more gentle, get into people's hearts. But read that. That's fantastic. Um, a bit of a, um, a sad a, a sad event of 1989. Do you want a sad one? Yeah. The Exxon mm. Valdez oil spill. Oh, no. Yeah. 37,000 tonnes of crude oil spilled. Um, and it's just like, they fucked up at every possible juncture so the radar was off and had been off for a year because it was broken (laughs) (laughs) the crew were battered and had been for a year (laughs) because they were broken yeah emotionally from being at sea so obviously take away any political leaning about corporate greed and capitalism doing a bad Which thing. I love and you hate. Exactly. Here's a podcast, BBC. <laughs> um, I suppose in one way capitalism's bad, but also it's great. You're listening to BBC Sounds. Um, <laughs> whether it's good or bad, it's totally like their own fault and there's no way that you can argue it. How many people do you think the company, Exxon Valdez, have uh, sued claiming it was their fault not their not their own fault. Oh, um, let's have a think. So you can sue God for it being an act of God. You sure. could sue Neptune for being in charge of the sea. You and could, Poseidon. Yeah, bang him in. That's three. You, Same guy. Okay. Um, well, at least two personalities. Uh, you could blame the Coast Guard. You could blame... Stop there. The Coast Guard hey! did get sued. Hey! Uh, so... <laughs> this is amazing. So it cost them so much money to clean up all the oil that they spilled because of their own negligence. They sued the Coast Guard for those cleanup costs because they claimed the Coast Guard were at fault for giving the crew, who were clearly rubbish, licenses to be a crew. <laughs> so we've employed these people who are not good. We've asked you for a license so that they can sail. You've said yes. We're yeah. mad at you now. Uh, it is very it is very similar to me suing Leeds Medical School because they gave Harold Shipman a medical degree. Or when I have a crash suing the AA because they taught me to drive. Wow, yeah, okay. Have any of the suings been successful? No. Good. Because I think even in this world, that's too far. Yeah. Uh, they tried to sue the state of Alaska where it happened because they... Uh, claimed that they didn't help them as much as they could have. I mean, it, it does make me think that in the court case, the, the person that's represented Alaska turns up covered in oil like, what What do you want? You, <laughs> you, you threw you, this at me and now you're telling me it's my fault for not helping yeah. you clear it up. Uh, if you didn't want me to spill oil in you, you shouldn't have been wearing that coastline. <laughs> uh, Laura... Yes. Can we uh, pause for 30 seconds while I go and do a wee? Because I've been drinking tea since about 8am. I'd rather we... we paused and you went and did that than, um, than I had to just sit there while you squirm. <laughs> now, on a BBC Sounds First, a host is going <laughs> to piss himself <laughs> live! <laughs> I'd just like to remind listeners that we are not affiliated in any way with BBC Sounds. <laughs> I'm back. My bladder's empty. Hey. Uh, let's do a quick silence for you to do an edit. And Will's back from pissing. Let's go. Oh, that's staying in, is it? Great. Yeah. <laughs> if you pay the Patreon for National Treasures, you could know <laughs> when the hosts need to do a wee wee. Um, do you want to hear a birth, a death, or what I think is an incredible story? 
like a birth, please, Will? Uh, I feel like we've had the death of a wall, we've had the death of a lot of guillemots, and now <laughs> I want a birth. <laughs> Absolutely love the use of the guillemot there. Not the bird I'd have gone to, or the band I'd have gone to, but very, very good. Um, right, births. Obviously, since 1989, the records are great. There are so many births. So I've picked seven. Seven births mm. that made me feel insubstantial as a human being. <laughs> so let's let's start with an actor who I think is going to be one of the all-time greats of acting. Taron Edgerton. Oh! I thought he was... No offence, Taron, if you're listening. I'm sure you are. Uh, he's three years younger than me. And he's been famous for a long time. Well, that makes sense, though, because what was it? Kings Mill he came Kings to? Kings Mill? No, not Kingsville. What was he called? Kingsman. Kings, Kingsman. He was the sort of playing a young early twenties guy, and that wasn't he. Yes, I know, but I just hate that. Like, I genuinely get annoyed that I've ever been nominated for an Oscar, despite not being an actor. Like, do you know when um, John Stewart stopped hosting the the Daily Show in America and yeah. Trevor Noah took over? Legit, a part of me was like, "What? They didn't even consider me." This is what I, of course they didn't. <laughs> I was barely doing page 15s at that time. Like, who should we go for? Famous Trevor Noah or some bloke in Manchester? <laughs> uh, so he, him, Taron Edgerton, happy birthday, Taron. Uh, Taylor Swift. <gasps> of course, because 1989 was her album, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I love Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. I really She's like She's so great. I was never really into, like, that many female pop stars growing up. I was much more of a boy band kind of a teenager with my crushes. But now, in my 30s, I'm fully making up for it. I love Taylor. I love Miley. I love Dua Lipa. I'm all over these women. Where do you stand? I'm going to let that joke go, but I wish I was. Uh, Joe, you know I love, unironically, and uh, Little Mix. I think that it's, <laughs> it's absolute banger after banger with Little Mix. yeah. Uh, have you seen Get Out, the Jordan Peele film? No, it looked a bit spooky for me. Super, super good film. Uh, the star of that, Daniel Kaluuya. Uh, he's born in 1989. Mm. Uh, now, do you follow golf, Laura? I do not. Could you name any famous golfers? I think there's a young one called Rory. Okay, well, yes, he was born in 1989. Rory McIlroy. Yes! But I... But I no, yes! <laughs> I thought he was about 45. Yeah, but that's just golf, isn't it? As soon as someone dresses like a golfer or expresses yeah. an interest in golf, you add 15 years to their age. Sports people are terrifying when it comes but to age. But the thing with sports, though, is that you are, you're either good at it by four or you're never going to be good at it. Yeah, that's true. But like, let's say uh, Tiger Woods, for example. Like, I bet you and I are less than 10 years younger than Tiger Woods, despite him being like one of the most famous sportsmen for the past what feels like a million billion years. years so uh, tiger woods was born in 1975 like we're just 10 years older than him yeah we're Blimey. only a couple of years younger than roger federer yeah and tennis man like roger federer feels like if you told me he was 80 i believe you because yeah. i think he's been winning since i was born yeah like if you told me that Andre Agassi once lost a game to Roger Federer, I go, yeah, but those timelines definitely match up. Sure, yeah. Uh, Roger Federer was in the first Star Wars film. Was he? No, darling. See, I believed it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Despite me telling you he was born in 1990, uh, 80, I mean, no, that's like, well, it makes sense. He's been around forever. Like uh, Stephen Gerrard. Wayne Rooney, I think, will be a very, very... Wayne Rooney's about our age, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, Wayne Rooney is about our age. Wayne Rooney was born in... Uh... Rain Wooney? Wayne Rooney. Uh, yeah, 1985. Like, he's a year yeah. older than us. We but, then, but that makes sense with football, because wasn't he, like, that whole Wayne Rooney's thing was that he was, like, 18 when he was, like, amazing for yeah. Manchester? Here's a question for you, as we're on sports people. When do you think Marcus Rashford was born? Oh, fuck. Probably, like, 1993. <laughs> 97. No! Oh, God. Marcus Rashford has never existed in a world in which the Toy Story films don't exist. No wonder he's so kind. Toy Story is the turning point. Everyone born after turning, after Toy Story, is just a much more empathetic person, probably. What a lovely end to that sentence. Probably. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, just because there'll be some sort of... There's lots of people who are not, but let's just... Maybe that'll be a line in the sand and looking back, people will be like, Pixar was the most influential thing to ever happen because without Toy Story, no nice people would ever have been born. And why do people in the future talk like that? Um, Like idiots. <laughs> Do you know what I like? Pixar and Toy Story. I think that a big thing for society was, A, when our vocal cords got a lot shorter and Toy Story coming out. Thank you very much. No, it's because everybody's gone over to a vegan diet, so not having to chew meat means our jaws have weakened, so we just talk with much weaker jaws. Well, that's... Do you know what? That's true. That's the thing about vegetables. They're famously not hard to chew at all. Get a broccoli, no no resistance. <laughs> not when you've cooked it. How much are you cooking? Do you go for an al dente vegetable? I don't really like vegetables at all, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think vegetables will taste sad and depressing. And everybody's solution is always, hey, but if you put butter and salt on them, and I'm like, sure, butter and salt's delicious, but just put butter and salt on other stuff that was already delicious, and then it's double delicious. Mm, do you know what's really tasty in this butter, salt and broccoli? Everything apart from the one bit. <laughs> exactly. Whereas if you put butter and salt on, say, bread then you haven't got the sadness of broccoli ruining your butter and salt dinner. It's still delicious. And it's still... <laughs> and you haven't got any nonsense to deal with. Exactly. Um, Daniel Radcliffe, born 1989. <sighs> See, if you'd said he was born in 1995, I'd believe you, because I don't really... He just is a child in my head and he'll never grow up. Little Harry Potter. But see, so but all these people, they're all... Um... Oh, Elizabeth Olsen, who plays Wanda in WandaVision and the Marvel films. What? Okay. Is she related to <laughs> Mary Kate and Ashley? I don't know. I can find out for you. Because they're much more my era. I don't. But hang on. Isn't she playing the. Like opposite Paul Bettany? Yeah, but it's Hollywood, isn't it? Ugh. But he must be at least like 15 years older than her. Um. How old's Paul Bettany? Mary Kate and Ashley are uh, born in 1986. They're the oh, same as us. School. They are not related to Elizabeth Olsen. Paul Bettany. It was born... was born in 2000. No, that's when A Knight's Tale came out. Um... Oh, 1992. <laughs> 1971. <laughs> yeah, he's 48. Yeah, that's two. 1971, that's an 18 year age gap. He should not be playing opposite Elizabeth Olsen. He's married to Jennifer Connolly in the real world. Oh, Elizabeth Olsen must be related to them twin ones. She looks the same. Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, speaking of inappropriate age gaps. Do you know that Emmanuel Macron met his wife when she was his teacher and he was 15? I did know that, yeah, that's not good. Why is that's no, creepy. Why is no one talk about Emmanuel Macron's pedo wife? Why does that not get mentioned much? It's either, and this is going to sound possibly a bit xenophobic, it's either the gender or it's that they're French. I mean, let's not get all men's right activists. But I tell you what, if someone... I mean, Boris Johnson, fair play to him, gets a lot of stick. But if he was fucking a schoolgirl, I think we'd draw a line. But Carrie Simmons is like 23 years younger than him. Cool. Was she 15 when he started banging her? No. <laughs> no, because yeah, that's the not. actions of a pedo. Um, <laughs> so that's the... But this is what I'm saying about the... It's a long enough go to be historically relevant this year, but it's... It's also... a long enough go. Oh. I absolutely loved that. It's a long enough go. <laughs> it's a long enough go. <laughs> but the deaths are all of people from the past. So, like, Elizabeth Olsen, uh, Daniel Kaluuya, Taron Egerton, they're all people of today. But the people hmm. that died in 1989 are of the past. What do you think? Like, Salvador Dali died in 1989. And if you'd have told me... So, hang on. So, Will, Will, your main problem with this year is that the people dying are from a different era to the people being born. No, what I'm saying is it feels like there should should never... No, listen to me. I understand how time works. I'm au fait with time. It doesn't sound like you do. Right, here's what I mean, right? I don't think that it's nice that I live in a world where at some point Taron Edgerton and Taylor Swift were knocking about, as was Salvador Dali. I think he should have died in 1750. He belongs to the past, the actual past. Like I can understand that Neil Armstrong's cutting about because he's from the 60s. That's fine. But Dali... <laughs> Emperor Hirohito died. He was the Who? 
He Who was the, the fuck is Emperor Hirohito? Exactly. He's from the past. No, not everybody called Emperor is from the 1600s. No, but the point is, Emperor Hirohito was the Emperor of Japan during World War Two. Like, he's a historical figure. Yeah, but that's figure. only like 40 years before the 80s. Right, Rory McElroy's mum is breastfeeding watching the news and Emperor Hirohito's died, not having that as a scene. But that's reasonable, Will. No, it's not reasonable. He belongs yeah, to the past. Yeah, it is. Isn't, like, the current president of the US, like, he was born in the war, wasn't he? And I'm not a fan of that either. <laughs> so you want everybody to just exist within, like, a neat 50-year package and then go away no. so they don't muddle in with people who are in the next 50-year package? Kind of, yes. But okay. It, but less stupid than that. I think <laughs> that, I think that people belong... To a time. <laughs> so, so you're like a time racist. No, not a time racist. I'm no ha- borders Whoa. on the planet. No, no borders on the planet. But in time, you want people to stick to their own time. Stop messing about. Stop coming over here with your old Salvador Dali ways and messing up our Taylor Swift. But do you not think that's right? Do you not think that... <laughs> <laughs> Salvador Dali is like one of the greats of art. You could talk about Da Vinci, Van Gogh, Dali, and no one would be like, well, they're three... Do you just feel like... I'm starting to feel now like you just don't think there there were painters in the 20th century. I don't think there should be ones that are as influential and um, permeated through consciousness as Dali pissing about while Elizabeth Olsen's born. It's like if someone told me that Boudicca had watched the moon landing. I go, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but that's just a totally different Because thing. she belongs feels... to the past. She yeah, belongs in the past. Yeah, but painting didn't stop no. after, like, the Renaissance. It's like... Uh, I just, like Whatever you're about to say, it's not like that it way. Is, it it's is. It's like it a is, 20th it, century it, it artist that was doing something different in the 20th century... Dying at quite a reasonable time. Right, listen to me. Vimto was invented <laughs> in 1908, right? Yeah. So what very... And um, it was being sold as of 1912, okay? So what I'm saying to you is... That's some due diligence. Thank four you. Four years just to check on Vimto. It's delicious. You've got to do the work. What I'm saying is I don't think it sits right with me for the fact that there was some bloke in the northwest of England sipping on a Vimto when he hears about the outbreak of World War One. I. I think World War One and Vimto <laughs> belong in different <laughs> places. Archduke okay. Franz Ferdinand's dead. Absolute nightmare. <laughs> Lovely Vimto then. <laughs> if you wrote that in a script, you'd get a question mark from your script editor being like, could this have happened? That's the way I feel about little baby Daniel Radcliffe watching the death of Emperor Hirohito. Different places. Okay, all right. So there's some deaths of some people that 20 years later became big as they reached the age that they should have done. And and some people dying at the end of their life. And I, oh my goodness, so mind-blowing that these things overlapped. Yes, I'm also going to Whoa. find out some, some things that happened in 1908. Right, here we go. The no, British... well, we're not doing that. <laughs> Ernest... This isn't a podcast about Vim. No, but it, 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 it works more when you go back. When you go back, right? <laughs> the first round the world car race was in 1908. Brilliant. Now, they it's had very... the Vimto to sustain them. Well, does that feel right well, they to didn't, you? didn't, though, because that was 1912. They had the promise of Vimto. You could be on the Titanic sipping a Vimto going, oh, iceberg's getting awfully close, not having it. Chip Hello. a bit of the ice off it, stick it in your Pop Vimto. Pop it in your Vimto. Hey! <laughs> Mel Blanc, the original voice of Bugs Bunny, someone you think of as, like, being from the past, died in 19... 19- 89. Gilda Right, Bradner. I think this is just your idea of the past. Like, no, I didn't think of... Like, if you told me he was still alive, I'd be all right with that. Yeah, and then... Oh, I just... I hated it. Like, for example, <laughs> hit, let's do some things that happened. Leave these yep. people and their horrible That's what we're time meant to travel. Be doing. <laughs> right? Tiananmen Square. The tank man in Tiananmen oh, Square. Yeah. Right? That happened in 1989. 
But you know what else you could do? You could watch that on the news and go, oh, that's terrible. Change the channel. What's on? The first episode of Seinfeld. I don't think that should be the same, yeah? Brown, bear, ground, but down. Don Commie's going mad. So, yeah. Seinfeld debuts 1989. Tiananmen Square, 1989. Now, Tiananmen Square, what... So, there's the famous stop in front of the tank. This is a protest against communism? I think it's the... Yeah, it was student... Yes. ...revolt in 1989 against... I think it's the oppressive... They'd gone too far and people were starting to get issue with it. So, in the similar way that, like, in the French Revolution, it was the students that started it all the same in china but they didn't win in china mm. it's, it's, there's no joke there it's just awful china nice food terrible power well you lefties it's what you want to the uk to be like if you get your way absolutely i think m- me and keir starmer we <laughs> bloody love china uh more sad politics but also good politics mm-hmm. uh P.W. Botha, the prime, the president of South Africa, yeah, goes to visit Mandela in prison, Ooh. Uh, which is a big move. And then in the election that year in South Africa, um, the party, because is, is it the National Party that were doing apartheid? They won, but with a massive, massive decrease in their votes. And F.W. de Klerk, Frederick Wilhelm de Klerk, who becomes the prime minister, starts the end of apartheid. Hey! But isn't it mad that this is now in the wrong time? How could apartheid still be going in 1989? Yeah. But uh, F.W. de Klerk, he became the pr- the vice president when Mandela was president in 94. Okay. And there have been no problems in South Africa since. None whatsoever. There you go. Brilliant. Yeah, all right. Did you know I'm part South African? Which part? My dad's family. My grandfather on my dad's side is South Af- was South African. Can you do the accent? Yes. Go on then. I can do quite a good South African accent. I think it's not bad. That's not bad at all. All of my family on my father's side are South African, so we sort of had this around quite a lot when we were younger. That's, that's, that's actually... I think it's a really hard accent to do. Yeah, it's pretty my, my... reasonable. Oh, can I... Can I do a South African accent? That's gone Kiwi That's almost bad. immediately. I don't think I can do Kiwi because I can do Australian and South African. I can't do Kiwi. Um, so, yeah, lots going on. Here's a nice event that happened. The first civil union. Two gay people getting in the eyes ah. of the law. Not married, but civil union. Civil union. What, could, what country? Well, I was going to ask you, go have a guess. Um, I'm going to guess 1989. Mm, so it's probably somewhere that's not too right-wingy and religious-y. I'm going to guess uh, Canada. No, I was a good guess. Uh, Denmark. Ah, well done, the Danes. Well done, the Danes. So uh, I've got no information on who they are, but it's in the... Re- so that's nice. Yeah. Again, again, I don't think there should be legal civil unions and apartheid in the same year. Um, I'm pro the civil union. I don't like... I hate, I hate apartheid. I think it's shit. I like that that was that early, though, because growing up in the 90s, I'd say homophobia was rife. Like, like terrible so i like that those sort of changes for adults were starting while we were still being terrible children yeah also quite nice that it like it was a quite a mature thing for a country to do during the aids crisis yeah that was all going on in the AIDS, wasn't it yeah a uh, bit of bad news now i'm afraid mm. uh, the first al-qaeda cell was found in the usa oh but they found it via the internet because they got dial-up internet for the first time in 1989 it Crikey. would have been terrible, and there were like three people on it, but um, the internet. Do you want my big finish? Always. Hello. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> uh, 
Clint Malachuk. Great name already. I'm thinking America. I'm thinking deep Canada. south. Oh, okay. I'm thinking he's a mountain man. He's an ice hockey player. Great. A professional ice hockey player. Now, I think ice hockey is... I have similar opinions to ice hockey and horses. Legs, legs are dangerous enough. Let's not put, in the case of horses, hammers on the end. And in the case of ice skating, knives on the end of your feet. Have you seen that great documentary series on Netflix about enforcers? No. Do you know the film Goon, starring Stifler? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I haven't seen it because it looks dog yeah. shit. Yeah, I'm aware of it. But it's, a, it's about an enforcer, right? So there's a role that you play in hockey, which is basically you're there to beat people up and fight to sure, protect sure, sure. your better players. And there's a great series about, like, of these enforcers like basically going out and doing bare knuckle boxing once or twice a week um and whether it's good or bad for the sport okay ice hockey i'm here it's the 80s mighty ducks is happening it is but not like this okay because clint malachuk gets into an accident it's not an enforcer there's no goon but one of his opponents accidentally slits his throat Ooh! with an ice skate he cuts his carotid artery and his jugular vein. Now, I will say, spoiler alert, he doesn't die. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> walks off the ice with a bit of help. What? Because someone slit his throat walk? with an ice skate. What's he doing? Like, rolling up his neck to, like, keep it sealed? I feel good. I feel good. I feel strong. <laughs> I am talking get... like someone from the future. Ah, uh, Toy Story was a real turning point for society <laughs> as a whole. Uh... Eleven. How does that fa- happen? El- because I don't know. But that's, I think it must have fallen. There was a scuffle. Because as I mentioned before, Laura, they got fucking knives <laughs> on the end of their legs. <laughs> but um, eleven fans fainted at the amount of blood. Yeah, too bloody right. Jugular's Th- the big one, isn't it? Go for the jugular. Three of the players, the players, threw up on the ice. <sighs> and two people in the audience had a heart attack. What? <laughs> This is mayhem. So I'm picturing Guernica, but at an ice rink. It's horrible. And also, I think because blood is very warm uh, of a human. Oh, like, do you think it's steamed? It bounced. No! What? <laughs> Get uh, off. So, a little. Uh, so, he survived and he was fine. And he had a few, he has a few issues. Uh, he's got OCD and alcoholism. Mm. Uh, and, and they were doing... He's still fine, still alive. But his medication was wrong for his different ailments. And a few years later, he tried to kill himself, oh. shot himself in the face, survived! Jesus Christ, this man is made of steel. Clint Malachuk, the unkillable man, who I found out thanks to, years and years, 1989... What an ending. Is he still alive now? He's still alive now. He seems absolutely fine. Like he's just living his life. Wow. He lives in Canada. I assume he never went back to playing ice hockey. I think he did, you know. What? You've got to get back on the knives. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's, he'll be 60 this year. He lost one and a half litres of blood. He was skating again ten days later. Get off that is not right anyway there we go clint malachuk oh i once got smacked across the throat with a hockey stick playing hockey and that was scary enough i thought i was gonna die then from having a closed up windpipe whack a blade on the end you're clint malachuk mate well congratulations clint malachuk if you're listening we are really impressed with you um, thank you, Will. Thanks for teaching me all about 1989. I loved it. A lot happened. Busy, busy year. Yeah. Not happy with the uh, births and deaths. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> I'd like some listener feedback on that, actually. Can you get in touch and let us know? So it's at Treasures Pod on Instagram and Twitter, uh, National Treasures Podcast at gmail.com for your thoughts on this births and deaths. Are you with me that that just sounds like how time progresses? Or are you with Will? that there's some kind of portal whereby people from the past should be shuffled out of his consciousness before people he likes are born. If you think that it's totally okay that in Emperor Hirohito could have held a baby Taylor Swift (laughs) 
let us know. And if you are one of the uh, non-Patreon listeners who have enjoyed this and want more, please do sign up to the... Sorry. Uh, let's do that again, because Becca just showed me a bit of paper talking about horse dentists. <laughs> uh, if you want more content like hang that... Hang on, hang on. What? The man that had his throat cut is a horse dentist. What, in the real world? Yeah. He's a horse dentist now. Hang <laughs> Couldn't have waited two minutes. I love the that Beck is just listening to this recording in the background and adding. <laughs> He's a horse dentist. Is he a horse dentist now? We'll do the end. Well, we were signing off, but we seem to be diving back into 1989. He's not a horse dentist. <laughs> what even is a horse dentist? Do you mean vet? Becca, I'm working. <laughs> Maybe there's another horse dentist called... How are we spelling what, Malachuk? What, as it's... Really? What, how, how are we talking about horse dentists? <laughs> that is such a specialised job. Are you a vet? No. Put braces on the old fillies. Clint Malachuk, horse dentist, does come up. There is an equine dentist called Clint Malachuk. Well, I mean, I'm literally on his Wikipedia page. The one we're talking about... And I don't think the word horse is on there at all. This has been the worst sign-off to any of... This is why we're not on BBC. I'll tell you that for nothing. Right, Becca, I'm... A... <laughs> it's not. It's a different guy. Show it to me. Later career. Hang on. Sorry, Laura. We'll finish this <laughs> properly in a second. I'm but... so excited. You are fucking kidding me. He's a horse dentist. <laughs> Also, listen to this. Uh, he was once interviewed uh, by a photographer and um, the camera flash on the photographer's camera was stolen by one of Malachuk's emus. End the episode. End the episode. He's a horse dentist. Petition to get Becca as researcher on every episode during the live record. I am, I am sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I ever doubted you that former professional ice hockey player Clint Malachuk is now honestly that man is going to go wild on his Google alert for his own name when this comes out <laughs> um, if you're one of the uh, people who've listened to this that we've put out and thought hey maybe the patron is for me and you want more of this less horses to be fair uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash national treasures and just unearth a trove of treasures yeah, give it a try. If you don't like it, cancel in a couple of months. But we would love to have you. Uh, Laura, I've got a year for you for next time. Amazing. Yes, please. What year will we be doing? So, <laughs> I can't stress it enough. Didn't like the meld. So I've gone the past. It's the actual past. Mm -hmm. It's 1641, please. 1641. All right. I'm thinking Tudors, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, so all we'll right. We'll find out in a couple of weeks. We're going to dive in and find out. Uh, that's it from us on this Years and Years special episode. As we say, if you want more, head to our Patreon. There's already three years, I think, up there. And uh, 1641 will be out in a couple of weeks. Um, the second series of National Treasure's original flavour uh, will be out very, very soon. We are just beginning to record now as our uh, as places start to open. And if you want even more from us, do check out the YouTube channel. There's billions of interviews and it's very much like this, but with an extra person. Bye. Bye. Bye.